Hey guys, this is Brian with Paraflight where we build the Moster 185 engine and a lot of guys have asked me to put a video up on YouTube on how to go about rebuilding it from scratch. I've already torn the engine apart and cleaned it, but I can explain what I've done to this point. So the first and foremost is you got to get the jug off. You got to take obviously the head off. The rubber head gasket goes inside of this groove. Most of the time it's compressed way beyond what the specs are because people over torque. So you have to dig that out, clean the grooves out, make sure you get all the carbon buildup off. The carbon buildup basically works like coals in a fire. If there's a lot of buildup on the head, what happens is, is they get hot and they add a lot of heat to the engine. So about every 100 hours or so, you should pull the head, replace the, uh, the head gasket, and you should um, use a wire brush and just get all of that carbon buildup off of your head, which will eliminate a, quite a bit of heat buildup in, in the engine. The jug is the second most important part. When you pull the jug off, make sure that you clean the base where the, the gasket goes. I see a lot of guys that just, you know, replace the gaskets and throw it all back together and crimp it. it they don't actually clean it. Make sure you clean the head. A really good way to make sure that that's perfectly level is find an extremely smooth piece of glass and you can lay the head on the glass and that'll determine if there's any gaps in there. You're gonna have to use um, little uh, fillers in there to see if you can slide any pieces of metal. Maybe like, you know, it's sometimes they're like 0 .00 millimeter. I mean, it's so small, it's almost impossible, but that's why we've got the head gasket on there. And then make sure you clean up the exhaust really good and actually get inside of there and remove the carbon. One of the most common misconceptions is inside of the cylinder sleeve, there's this little tiny pinhole and that pinhole is for your back pressure or your pop-off pressure or back pressure inside of the, the compression. So what happens is if you're starting and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and it's not firing within the first or second pull, that little hole gets filled with carbon and that hole vents through the exhaust and that is why it's not firing because you don't have that back pressure in there. Um, so what you need to do is very carefully take a little screwdriver, or I'm sorry, a little drill, drill bit, and you're gonna drill that out, drill all the carbon out, and then before you reassemble anything, you need to blow it out with a pneumatic, an air pneumatic gun, and then once you get it all blown out, I usually use a carb cleaner and get all of the residue off of the bottom of the crankcase. Make sure that you stick your finger in the connecting rod here and make sure that that is smooth. If your connecting rod has a lot of discoloration, I'd recommend you place it and also make sure you check your roller bearings in the bottom of the crank. The roller bearing is this guy here. That is what the piston, this fits inside of here. And that is what your piston is rotating around on. There's also one in the bottom of the crankcase. Um, we've, we've checked everything in this particular engine and it is good. The bottom of the, uh, the crank is good. We're just replacing the top roller bearing. So when you put this back together, obviously again, make sure it's cleaned. You want to lube the base gasket with your AMS oil or with whatever two stroke oil that you're using. You're also going to lightly lube the sleeve. You're going to lube the piston. We just put the piston back together. If any of you guys aren't familiar, the pistons all have A, B, or C ratings on there, and they all have an arrow. That arrow points to the exhaust side of the engine. So what I recommend that you do, this is what we did in AMP school, so there's the little clip. You want to put the clip at the back of the engine so that when you put the piston on the connecting rod, you only have to put the clip on facing you. It makes your job a lot easier. And then you're going to lube it up with a little bit of AMS oil. You're going to also lube up the jug and then you can compress your piston rings. And the piston has these little clips. That's extremely important that your rings are on the clips. This particular engine when I received it did not have the top ring on the clip and it scored the, the cylinder jug. So we had to resurface it and the inside of the cylinder jug is Malgam. And Malgam is extremely hard and if you scratch it, it's going to be beyond repair. I was able to salvage this and that is why the rings are important on your piston because those rings are what bite up against this amalgam and that's what draws and scrapes all of the crud off the, the wall after each combustion. So if you guys have questions or you're not sure about something, you definitely should contact us. Um, the number will be listed at the end of this video. Another misconception is the base gaskets. Every one of these engines has a different type of variety of base gasket. And they're all like a 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0.01, and they're very, very thin. So when you get to your base gasket, if it's destroyed, you need to figure out what was on there. And normally there's a little bit of the base gasket that doesn't actually get compressed that you can use 
a micrometer and you can actually find, or I'm sorry, a caliber, and you can find the thickness. So you need to find the thickness and I, you can do it on the edge of the, the base gasket and that'll determine what you need to replace yours with. That base gasket, as thin as that is, is what basically determines the top of that stroke and that piston. So if you put it back together and it's not working right, some people double these up, that's not what you do. You have to find what the original engine was built with and then replace it with the original thickness of the, the gasket. 